do you all ever have moments where you get together and just have your own girls' nights and just hang out? And what's that like? Girl, that was in the movie. <laughs> Anybody got time for that? I don't like none of them girls. I want to get like, on my okay, nerve. I can't have oh. On December 22nd, 1995, four women joined forces and added their names to the list of women that wished a mother would. You know the scene. Ooh, you got a white woman. Yeah, I was your white woman for 11 years. Bernie, played by the legendary Angela Bassett, collects her cheating husband's belongings from their expensive house, packs them in his white BMW, and sets it on fire. I'm a psychopathic maniac, maniac. Angela Bassett standing in front of the fire while smoking a cigarette is one of those badass shots in movie history. When Bassett turns to her circle of friends, expertly played by Loretta Devine, Whitney Houston, and Layla Rashawn, they bask in a ladies' night over wine scored by Tony Braxton's Let It Flow. As iconic as all the other scenes are in this film, this is the scene that showcased the lesson of the film the most, and that is black sisterhood. The power of your friends to make you laugh in your lowest and most vulnerable moments. For Loretta Devine, it was her first starring role in a major film, but she's been giving us powerful black women since the day she decided to step on a stage. This week on Cocoa Butter is the Era, we explore the friendship of black sisterhood in cinema through the eyes of national treasure Loretta Devine. Hello, hello, my friend. Hello. Queen. How thank are you? you? I am wonderful. Thank I, you. It's such an honor to be here with you today. You have embodied some of the most iconic characters, the most beautiful, complex, hilarious characters ever. <laughs> From era defining amazing musicals to TV and film productions that have truly changed the landscape of Hollywood. So it's such a joy to have you here. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? We shall. You ready for it? Okay. Okay. So a lot of people may not know that the first film that you were in was directed by a black woman, Jessie Maple. Yes, it was. What was, was it like? How was that like working well, with a black director? Her being a black woman and a director was nothing unusual to me. I think Debbie Allen was there at the time and she had. I had talked to her about a few projects because we were both from Houston. And it was just sort of like, even back then, it was sort of like the norm. So a lot of times, if you don't know what's, what's out of the norm, you know, it just feels like what should be. And so by the time I got to New York and started my career, I I had, I had a, a Master's of Fine Arts from Brandeis University. I had an undergraduate degree from University of Houston and I had worked at the Black Arts Center in Houston, Texas for a while. So I was lying about my age. I was much <laughs> older than I appeared, thank God. And so, <laughs> Based on Terry McMillan's New York Times best-selling novel, Waiting to Exhale was released in 1995 and opened up at number one at the box office. Directed by Forrest Whitaker, the film shows multiple sides to black women in different positions of power, passion, and friendship. Waiting to Exhale provided a moment for black women to rally around characters that looked and felt like them on screen, but it also showed them supporting one another instead of competing over the love of a man. What did the Black Sisterhood look like for the four of you? We were in Arizona for three months when we did. That was when you used to do a film and it would take three months to do it. And um, Forrest Whitaker was our director and he was a very quiet spoken man and he would always come to the room and we'd go, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, he's talking, <laughs> to make everybody get quiet. But we spent a lot of time upset with it. We had bowling parties, we had just times that we would hang out and we genuinely really loved each other. And everybody is sort of like friends now. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful experience, and I'm amazingly that show did. I don't think that show won any awards. You'd be amazed. From I'm still mad. I'm still mad. Okay, <laughs> how dare. we were nominated for really? For, I think Ooh. we won maybe some. Uh, well, we we won the uh, Image Awards and stuff like because that. Deserve an Academy the Emmys Award. And it the Oscars that, and all the of the scene other with you and Gregory Hines. Come on. Yeah. What? You just, I, I was in the mirror and just. But just it did set it. up the format. Yeah, and it so did. many things came as yeah, a result of that, it was and so. Good. That that makes you proud, you know. Yeah, well, I'm proud of you, okay? Thank here's, you. Here's here's the Academy Award for you. <laughs> the 90s saw a blooming array of black women taking the lead in stories about themselves and their interests. Set It Off, written by Takashi Buffer and directed by F. Gary Gray, told a different story. Starring Queen Latifah, Jada Pickett Smith, Vivica A. Fox, and Kimberly Elise, the film is a complex, tragic drama that flips the script on the narrative previously told by black women. And in 2017, we got a comedy that redefined the use of a grapefruit for a new generation of moviegoers. A movie so original that it once again flipped the script on the raunchy comedy and made it from the point of view of black women. 
that movie was Girls Trip. Take a moment and really take in the fact that you've laid the groundwork for what we see today with black women feeling like they can be unapologetically themselves. To be personal about it, I worked with all of those ladies, every one of them in every film that you named. And some of them, I worked with them three or four times. Either it's their mother, their sister, their aunt, or some kind of relationship. So in a way, I feel like you're growing with them or you're just, you, we're all in it. And, together, but you you do get a great draw when you see, like Tiffany Haddish, I work with her on the Carmichael show, and she's so huge right now. But then I go all the way back, and then I, I worked with Jada when she was first starting out, and you know, you just, Queen Latifah I did, I've done three or four films with her, and you just see how everybody has grown and still coming. And some of the guys, you run into them and you go, God, we're still doing this, and we're still doing it in a big way, Dorian Wilson. We're doing a play, a stage play together for Don Welch. I do stage plays all the time because a lot of the new people that are coming in the business, they come through that medium in L.A. And, and sometimes you can help them get a foot up by getting into something that you're in. So you want to do things to help other people in that way. Because people come from everywhere. They're coming here and they're, they're creating their dreams here. You know, you watch a lot of BET. Tyler Perry, I love him because he has made it possible for so many people to change their lives because there's so much work now in Atlanta. And he's changed the business. He's changed the world for us. If you notice, a lot of times with actors, when they start out, you may get one or two films where you're in what you think, oh, I'm gonna be a movie star because that's what you start out thinking. But then there's, you moved over to the side, you in, end up only doing black films or films that, well, if there are no black films to do, where do you go? But because of Tyler, because of Oprah, because of the new people that are coming in, Miss Duganay, there are all these outlets and, and people are coming from England and from Australia. Black people are coming from all these places because their dreams can be built here because there are all these things that two or three people have created that has made it possible for us to stay visible, to stay to stay in the medium. You get so much done by helping people with, with short films or, or, or people that don't have a lot of funding. So you end up doing a lot of independent films. I think uh, half of my career has been independent films of people just starting. I did Punks when it was first coming out and now you have Pose yes. with Billy Porter. My I favorite. mean, it just, everything it. just turns over and says yes, it's yeah. almost like a flower, so. The babies that we're having now, I think have more talent than anybody in the universe. Do they sing, dance, act, write, uh, all of it. You have They're to- are directing at like 10. I yeah. know, you have to say, what are you doing? But <laughs> that's, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. So I think we have coming in the future some, incredibly new things. It seems like right now everybody's just going back to the old stuff and we're doing old stuff. And I'm hoping that the younger generation will bring in some new things for people to look at and that you don't have to do dream girls over and over and over. You do what the young people have created for you to do. And I'm lucky because a lot of young people write for me. They've seen me yes. since they were babies. They know me from Doc I fight for you. I fight for you. Okay, <laughs> put me in the ring. I got you. <laughs> and so I get, I, I'm working more now than I was yeah. when I was in the 90s so it's like uh, oh, it's just a tremendous blessing and I'm just so glad that they liked what they saw. What do you want people who watch your work throughout the years especially particularly black women to take away from the work you've done? That they can do it and that they're beautiful. That's what I was, when I when I came into the room and I saw all the beautiful women in this room, I was like, God, y'all know how pretty you are. <laughs> See? <laughs> like when I was coming up, it wasn't, it was, I mean, if you thought you were cute, then you thank you something. You know, they would go, oh, you thank you something. <laughs> you know, that was what people would say to you. But that isn't, it. it's, you're allowed to be beautiful now. You're allowed to have your own thought your own interests and and that's a wonderful a wonderful it gives you a whole new choice or a whole new way to enjoy your life yeah, i think and absolutely. so that's very good that's beautiful. and if i was a part of some of that happening then I've done whatever I was supposed to do, I think. You are a huge part of that happening. Thank I have to you. tell you on a personal, as a black woman growing up in Houston, Texas, and being a part of the performing arts school and theater, oh. I would walk down the hallways and I'd see pictures of you, Debbie Allen, and Felicia Rashad. Really? And I saw myself. I saw a bunch of white people <laughs> in class, but I was the only black girl. So I would see images of you and you gave me hope. Oh my And so God. if it had not been for the doors you knocked down and the trails that you blazed, I would not be sitting in the seat oh, today. So it is a profound you. honor to be sitting across from you right now. Thank you. So and listen, thank you. so much thank ta you. talent comes from Texas. Okay, can we, we talk about it? How much time do we have? Okay, <laughs> on the people. <laughs>
Loretta Devine's distinguished career has spanned more than 40 years, and we haven't even touched on her television roles on iconic shows like Boston Public, her Emmy-winning turn on Grey's Anatomy, and her early work on A Different World, along with countless other credits. She is part of the great legacy of black actresses of the 1980s who continue to shine in the modern era. Divine has infused strength and complexity into every role she plays, from mothers to teachers and doctors to dreamettes. But one thing stays true throughout Loretta Divine's career. She has been a voice for black women's stories to be seen and heard. We are here and we are complex.